these were recommended for me on Amazon. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're nailing lice. If you're on the computer, Amazon's like, I think you might like these. You're fucking right. <laughs> Our bloody words. <laughs> Woo! I'm almost 40. <laughs> Thank you. So here we are. Here we are. So <laughs> here we are. Uh, the show. How do? Well, so this is welcome. So this is this is my show. Uh, it's bouncy here. It, it didn't used to be before lockdown. Now it's bouncy. Why is that? <laughs> the show. The show is called. Uh, well, people think the show is called Mother, but they're actually mistaken. It's actually called Moth ER. Yeah, and it's a show where I reenact various situations where moths have found themselves in the emergency room, you see. So, uh, number one is, the moth, if you lose a moth, oh, you lost your hand. It makes more sense than you having a, having a moth. Oh my God, I had a moth situation. Have it just for, well, quickly, come on. <laughs> There was a massive moth on the train station at Manchester Piccadilly, and it was just it was it was like prehistoric. It was so big, and I and I said to, I said because it was in front of a really busy train, so I was like, people are going to stand on the moths. And I went to the ticket person, and I was like, did you know that there is? It? And he was like, is this about the moth? And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, do something. It's just <laughs> oh dear. And then I um got on its back, and off I went. <laughs> But anyway, number is the first moth uh, is um, ah, and that is you might not know this, but often moths get chased by bats, and when that happens, they've got a shrill noise that they make to to d deter the bat, you see. And this one moth in particular had been chased by a lot of bats, so had been doing his shrill noise an awful lot given himself tinnitus and then gone to <laughs> gone to soothe himself but then realised he doesn't have hands or ears <laughs> but, <laughs> but it's a lot to commit to for an hour <laughs> give us a cheer if you've ever had a mother yeah, you see mm -hmm. Topical, and uh, yeah, I've had. I think no matter what your upbringing, we can all appreciate. We always think of our mums when we hear certain sayings and phrases and stuff. So my mum used to say, instead of saying "excuse me," she would always say, "Pardon, Mrs. Arden, there's a pussy cat in your garden." <laughs> Isn't that odd? But that must come. It must come from somewhere. I should probably Google it, but then I don't really want to shatter the illusion. Do you know what I mean? I don't, don't really want to know. Uh, and once I did a preview in Stourbridge, and this lady said, "My mum used to say, Pardon, Mrs. Arden, there's a cow in your garden.' So, so it must be like a, like a regional thing. <laughs> so in Cornwall, it'd be like, Pardon, Mrs. Arden, there's yet another holiday home in your, in your garden. So it's just, yeah, varies." Another thing my mum would say was, uh, careful or you'll split your difference. <laughs> and that comes with a lot of imagery, doesn't it? <laughs> of, of why, well, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Very much so. <laughs> and another one, which actually you said earlier to you, is a swizz. If something's a, like a oh, that's a swizz, that is. My mum always used to say that, oh, that's a swizz. And I tell you what was a swizz. When I was a kid, yes, I was a baby goat, and okay, you're not to mention it. When I was a kid at school, I've never said that before. Um, <laughs> shot myself. When I was a kid, I um, uh, we used to. Did you have to do this? Where so obviously every single child at school had to do sports day. But at my school, every single child had to raise money. You know, if someone's going on sponsorship up a mountain or something. They got to raise money. Every child had to do that at school for sports day. So think how much money they were raising, and it was all through fifes. You know, fifes. <laughs> you know, fifes. Fifes, the bananas. Fifes. <laughs> I think it's the way I say fifes, you know, fifes. <laughs> Even more of a palaver when I was doing this in Scotland because they got fife 
the place. So it was just, and I didn't realise I had Fife the place. So it was just me, me going, do you know Fife? They'd be like, yeah, in Scotland. And I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> but Fife's, you know Fife's? Yeah. And you had to, <laughs> so we had to raise money for Fife's, you know Fife's? And, uh, <laughs> And then, but all the all the posh kids just raised all the money, and they would get. So you'd have all these prizes. So top tier fife, you know fifes. The top tier prize was little banana defibrillators. That's top tier fife prize. And uh, but I didn't, you know, I didn't. I tried really hard as well to raise money, and uh, you know, and didn't get the defibrillators. I got the uh, the the booby prize, which everyone got. Which, but I, like I said, I you know tried really hard and. The booby prize, no disrespect to the man, but it was, uh, do you remember, it was a, um, a signed photo of Chris Akabusi. Do you remember <laughs> Chris Akabusi? <laughs> yeah, and it was a very glossy photo, and it was that glossy that I stood on it, slipped, and that was the first time I heard my mum say, careful, or you'll split your difference. Um, yeah, my, my mum was a lovely lady, she's fantastic. She had like bright orange hair, like she died, and she had bright wool, bright orange trousers, and she had a massive hole in her stomach. Uh, but you never really noticed that because you were just naturally drawn to her very bright hair, very bright legs. And she had very bright hair and very bright legs because she was from Doncaster. Oh my God, that's near here. It's from, is this, is this fair to say? Are you both? Oh, okay, you're like, I'm not having anything to do with this. Um, my mum said that she wore very bright clothes. I just spat, sorry. Uh, because Doncaster was so depressing. <laughs> <laughs> but I once went to Doncaster and there was just loads of dead birds on the floor. Uh, yeah. <laughs> like they just flew over and thought, fucking hell. <laughs> just. <laughs> <laughs> flop themselves out the sky and it always smelt of death but that's the train the train station is next to an abattoir so it literally does so i knew a man that worked there and there was a rumor going around in the 90s that there was kangaroos in doncaster but that but that that was my fault so yeah because i once seen a dog on its hind legs so <laughs> saw it was a kangaroo told everyone <laughs> So we'd go, we'd, when we were in Cornwall, we'd go to Donna to visit my, my grandma, my mum's mum, and we'd get the train from Cornwall to a bloody right old mission. And then what I loved about my mum was that she was very, she, and I'm drawn to people now like this, subconsciously, people that, you know, people that like look through, look at life like through the eyes of a child, like metaphorically, not just like... <laughs> <laughs> Also, my, my mum's friend Liz said what she loved about my mum was that she never judged anyone. She felt she could tell her anything and she would never judge. But I said, Liz, why would you be friends with people that judge you, you know? Maybe I'm not my mother's daughter after all, you know? <laughs> and uh, so we went to visit my mum's mum on the train and then my mum got this, you know, Connect Four, the, the, that's got like a board like that with legs. And then, but my, this was like that, but instead of the holes, it was a net. And then the game was you had these plastic spiders and you had to flick them onto the, onto the net. It's not a train game. It's just these <laughs> fucking spiders flicking around. And we only got as far as Bobman and some guy says, can you please keep your spiders within the vicinity of your own table? Because we're just fucking flicking these spiders. And then that was the trip as well that I, uh, I put a hula hoop on each finger and then I went to the toilet and then I come back still with a hula hoop on each, <laughs> on each finger and my mum said that was very unhygienic and <laughs> very, <laughs> very judgmental of you there Viv actually. And, uh, I always got on really well with my gran but there were, you know, there were signs that she maybe wasn't, so my mum said that she had this bird called Jackie and then one day she got home from school and her mum had left the window open and Jackie had flown away and then my mum goes, will Jackie be alright? And her mum said, well because of her bright colours the other birds will probably peck her to death. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that really sad? And then another time, she was having a dinner, and uh, her mum goes, what are you up to tonight, Viv? And my mum goes, oh, well, now that Jackie's not around, I'll probably just feed the rabbits. And her mum goes, well, no, you won't, because you've just eaten them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I said that in Edinburgh at the festival, and then this lady started crying, and I said, <laughs> yeah. And I said, are you all right? And she goes, well, because I'm a vegan. And I said, well, I'm ever so sorry. But then, to try and make it better... I got it very wrong. 
<laughs> and I, I said, well, funny you should say that, because I once, I was driving, and a rabbit ran into my wheel. Why did I say this? Uh, a, a rabbit ran into my wheel, and then it was just dying, so then I pulled over to try and rescue it, and then I, I tried to give it mouth-to-mouth <laughs> resuscitation. Yeah, and then... I, well, what happened was I accidentally ate the rabbit's last breath. <laughs> so now I, I spend my life worrying that I'm possessed by the spirit of a, of a dead rabbit. <laughs> so what, that's what I was... So I said to the lady, so on behalf of someone that's got the spirit of a rabbit <laughs> within them <laughs> don't worry about it <laughs> yeah so my mum so she left home at, <laughs> so my mum left home at 15 in there you're not leaving home at 15 for shits and giggles and you know you're not having a nice time so she went to London met my dad and then my dad dearie me he was stressed shows itself in the most peculiar of ways, doesn't it? So my dad, does anyone get this? I, I have it often. I think it's quite a regular thing. You know, when you, you're so stressed, you get a wowk eye. <laughs> you know, face. In the seat, so when, when your eye goes... <laughs> <laughs> you know, when your eye does that, when you're stressed. But I don't, don't know why I told you that. My dad didn't have that. My dad had... Uh, <laughs> Do you get a wowk eye? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, now you've got a word. Now you've got a word for it. Or is that just what you tell your girlfriend? So when you're like winking at all the ladies, you're like, let me off. It's me, wow, Kai. <laughs> but anyway, my dad, had, my dad got so stressed that he had a massive elbow. Have you ever known that? He, it grew so big, even a, a tubey grip couldn't squash it down, just this massive elbow. And everyone said that when, when my dad come to pick me up from school, that my, my dad's elbow would come to pick me up <laughs> before, before my dad's. Just massive. So, you know, those adverts where it's like, um, if Colesburg made hats, they'd be the best hats in the world. I think my family's like, if Picasso made families... Like, <laughs> my dad with his massive elbow, my mum with a hole in her stomach and a... Yeah. So then, so my dad's from Cornwall originally, so they all moved back to Cornwall. And I always think it's weird with little villagers, what they think is weird, so... Oh, did you hear that? I just did a burp, but it was a silent burp. You know, I'd never know whether... Oh, wait a minute. Oh, I can feel it. Oh. It's one of them ones... Of, you know? <laughs> my friend Jack says that I've got like I've got the demeanour of someone that's got gills behind their ears, and then if <laughs> and if ever we went to the seaside, I'd just like jump in the <laughs> and then just die, <laughs> die off there to me, and I'm happy with that. <laughs> so when we moved to like a little village in Cornwall, people thought we were weird, but just because we were all bright coloured, well, like, and because my dad had a massive elbow, I guess that's why as well. <laughs> but. <laughs> So then when my mum was walking us to school, the, the, the bus would go past and get this, they, they'd shout skinny bitch at, at, at my mum. But they were very stupid because we used to get the bus and we only stopped getting the bus because this girl poured a can of coke on my head because she said that my legs were too hairy for the bus. <laughs> my legs too hairy for the bus. So, <laughs> so, so when the bus went past and someone shouted skinny bitch at my mum, we were just like, oh, well, that's the bus we usually get. Where did that come from? Top deck, right hand side, is fucking banana red. Fucking banana red. <laughs> fucking prick. Hope he slips on his own head. <laughs> Do you want another moth? <laughs> Bung. Bung. It's been rattling around me. Bung. That's a, that is a moth, spoiler alert, that had, uh, it's very hungry. So it's gone into a wardrobe for a little bit of a peck and got, uh, been nibbling away, got stuck in a waistband. <laughs> <That's> a <laughs> 
I was very, I was very, <laughs> I was so, I didn't realise that, because we didn't have much money growing up, but I didn't even realise, because we were, this is going to sound so wanky, but we were like so loved, so I had such a lovely time, and I didn't even know that, because we only did stuff that didn't really cost any money, so mum would always take us on nature trails, and she had this book of leaves, and then we'd like go off and find some leaves and then she'd be like oh that's that leaf but then we <laughs> <laughs> then we only stopped doing that because w- wherever i went i'd always just pick up a turd it was just <laughs> yeah always every time what about this leaf it's always a turd harry <laughs> and then just a lucky being from cornwall because my last show sort of slagged it off well it didn't really slag off cornwall sort of just a few people in it i guess yeah but but it's quite beautiful cornwall is and and but where 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 we lived in cornwall it's there's this place called sunny corner which i love because it's sunny and it's a corner. <laughs> and you might be like, I don't know why you told us that. I'll tell you why I told you that. Because where I live now, we live near a pub called The Friendship. And when we first moved there, I said to my partner, oh, can we go there for a drink? And he said, do you want to go there? Because you think it's going to be very friendly because it's called The Friendship. Yes. Yes, I do. And we went there. And let me tell you, they might need to think of renaming their pub. <laughs> 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 to the very hostile, is what I would <laughs> what I would suggest <laughs> but sunny corner lovely and uh, my mum used to take us crabbing crabbing uh, till the break of dawn uh, sunny corner we'd have a lovely time and uh, well, what it was was so for, uh, first time we went there my mum used bread rolls and then we put a bloody crab line in and the bread rolls just fell off and then they're just floating off like yeasty jellyfish and then my mum then my mum did some research and found out bacon brings all the crabs to the yard that's <laughs> I don't make the rules, that's how it is. So what it is, in Cornwall, where there's, there's this, I don't know if you have one round here, but there's this myth and legend about this big red crab, biggest reddest, is it Latin. And uh, so, so my mum said, I reckon if we caught big red, then people would think we were brilliant and no one would shout skinny bitch at me anymore. And we said, well, that sounds great, Vivian. Not really understanding what's happening because we're still children. But yes. So then, so we took it very seriously. We'd go there every day after school, crabbing. Uh, we would dress head to toe in blue because we were dressed as the ocean. And then, um, yeah. And then uh, sometimes I would wear shorts and that was to signify the tide being out. You see. And then uh, one day, we were crabbing away, and my mum got her crab line stuck in a bit of seaweed, so then she's sort of giving it a tug, and then this big red thing is thrust to the surface, and we're like, it's big red, it's big red, it's big red, it's big red. The words of big red have skimmed across the waters, travelled to all the children far and wide, and they've all come to help, and they've all got in a line behind my mum to help her. One kid in the middle's got confused, thought it was a conga. <laughs> so I Bloody hell, Simon, we're here for the crab. And then uh, eventually they've heaved and hoed and they've bloody done it. They've caught Big Red and he sort of arrived in an ominous mist because he was vaping. And (laughs) even crabs are rolling with the times these days. And he was everything that everyone said he would be. He was covered in barnacles and he had all the names of all the previous crab fishers that had lost their lives to him uh, tattooed on his claws. And he was bloody massive. What we would do, oh Cornish, he was bloody massive. Catch yourself sometimes. <laughs> bloody hell, imagine this in the bedroom. Bloody hell, oh yeah. <laughs> Shiver my timbers. <laughs> um, <laughs> so anyway, usually we get the crabs, put them in a bucket and then release them down the slipway afterwards. But this crab was too big, so we had to go get a biffa bin. Bring that up. <laughs> pop him in and then we just put him in there and he's got a bit of seaweed in his teeth so he's just uh, you know flossing it and then suddenly the mood's changed again another ominous mist blueberry and then this prick has come from nowhere and he's come looked in the biffa and he's gone here caught big red have he yes we have none of your business and then he's picked up big red by the crab line that he's flossing with and then he's just slammed him on the slipway but it's like, you know in them films like with Sylvester Stallone, don't you think Sylvester Stallone sounds like a badass, but Sylvester does not. <laughs> yeah? You know them films where someone will punch Sylvester Stallone and then he'll just go like... Like it won't bother him. <laughs> yeah, this is like... Big Red's just like straightening his shell up, not fast, you see. And then Big Red's then got the crab line, the, this knobhead's got the other side of it, then Big Red's just gone... <laughs> And then he's on the floor like, 
with his head all bent round, and that's the origin story of how banana heads called banana head. <laughs> 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 No one's fucking with us anymore, let me tell you that. Me and all the kids going around cheersing with our laughing cow cheese triangles. <laughs> bunch, of, bunch of legends, yeah? And life, life was pretty good after that. Yeah, as a result, you know the word travel? My mum got a new job and uh, she was, well, she, I think it was like Thornton, in a Thornton's shop, something like that, and it was all year round, not just Easter. Her job, <laughs> her job was people would come in and they'd be like, oh, I got a message from my cousin or whatever, and then my mum would ice the message on a big Easter egg all year round. That's what she'd do. Well, it didn't really last long because she's dyslexic. <laughs> nothing, ma- <laughs> nothing made sense. Uh, but I reckon she just involved with espionage, so everything made sense to someone. <laughs> and then she got a job for, for years and years and years in a cinema. She was a cleaner in a cinema, but because my mum is... God bless her. So my mum and her friend Paula, when they worked at the cinema, they made joke six, as in blah, out of... Uh, uh, what's it called? The Heinz vegetable soup. And then they, they must have like added gelatine or something because it's set, and then they would put all these joke six around the cinema. But my mum was a cleaner in the cinema. So everyone would just be like, why is there all this sick in the cinema? And my mum would be like, I keep having to have these meetings because everyone thinks they're sick everywhere. But it's not real. So it's a very, very flawed, that. Really. Um, yeah, and then I, uh, I had, like, my life inside the house was lovely. Like, I did, you know, love my mum more than I've ever loved anyone ever, really. But outside, peril. And I was d- drinking a lot and all this. I remember once, did you ever, if, I think it depends on if you had a big house. When you were a kid and you had a big house and you, say so you're going out drinking, would you bring people back to, <laughs> but you would, wouldn't you, if you had a big house. But if you didn't, like, we had a tiny house. My mum was like in, in the, not in the wall, Harriet. That's what I was. <laughs> there was a girl at uni and uh, she had a friend who, well, that's a terrible story. Well, she, she was found in a wall, cut up, murdered. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why. <laughs> so my mum was not in the... <laughs> yeah, awful business, yeah. So anyway, so would you... So it does depend on your house, doesn't it, whether you bring anyone back. Yeah. If it's big, isn't it, yeah. Mm-hmm. So, what I, so what I'm saying is, so people used to walk me home, but then I'd... In my house, right, in Cornwall, there's like an alleyway there, and then you walk round to get in, and then there's like a wall there. So if someone's walked me back after a night out, I don't want to bring them in. We'll just sit on the wall here and chat. And then, um, but you know, when you're pissed and you're chatting louder than you think you are. So I think what must have happened was my mum's heard my voice and then a boy's voice that she's not recognised, so she's thought I was in danger. So my mum's just appeared at the end of the alleyway in a nighty with a rolling pin in her hand. But because, because it's dark, the, the moonlight, she just lit up, looks like a ghost. <laughs> so, then, <laughs> so then this kid goes, do you see that? And by this point, I've had enough of him, so I'm like... See what? And then she's she's chased him. And then I like the idea of um so he then he could he'd come round every so often, but but like in the daytime, but I would always tell her to not be in because I like the idea of he'd see photos with her in. Be like <laughs> it's that woman. What are you what are you talking about? <laughs> Like, you know, in um, the film Witches, where, the, where that girl, she gets old in the picture, and then she's not there anymore. I love that film. <laughs> and it was filmed in Cornwall as well, actually. I'm a, well, I've digressed, anyway. Uh, yeah, so, I've drinking a lot, and then I always, I always, and my mum knew as well, the moment I uh, got old enough, I was going to leave Cornwall, and when you're not from money, isn't it? The only way you can leave somewhere is when you, you have to go to uni, didn't you? And then you... I didn't want to go to fucking uni, just wanted to get the fuck out of Cornwall. Uh, but then, so, I needed to save up money, and then I got a job at the corporate jumble sale, TK Maxx, which I loved. <laughs> and then, I think it's, it's the same, isn't it? Wherever you work in retail, if your store is suffering, they always get someone from somewhere else to try and make it better or something. So this prick from Reading... 
came and he had like big fat, he had a big fat quiff and black shirt and cowboy boots and he was full of shit. He told everyone that he went out with Natalie Ambrulia and Michelle Collins. But I think Michelle Collins has got a holiday home in Cornwall because she come into TK Maxx one day, didn't know who the fuck he was. So he's chatting, chatting rubbish. Uh, and then, you know, when you work, when you work full-time and you work with people, you think you like them, but you, when you go out in the real world, you're like, oh, God, I just tolerate you and I think I like you because I see you all the time. So then when we were drinking, going out, I got very discombobulated and me and him ended up snogging and we were very mortified. He was mortified. I wasn't best pleased with myself. And, uh, and then, because I wanted to go, because I was going to uni, I wanted to transfer the job to the Birmingham TK Max. so he said he'd sort it out, so I thought he was sorting it out because he was mortified looking at my face every day, so it was all sorted out. So then, I finally went to uni, went to the Birmingham TK Max to start the shift. The little prick, he had not sorted it out, and I have the demeanour of someone very mentally ill at the best of times. <laughs> Less alone when I'm in full uniform for a... <laughs> For a job that didn't exist. <laughs> and because I worked at the TK Max in Cornwall for so many years, we used to make our own name badges. So not only did I turn up in full uniform for a job that didn't exist, but I also had a name badge that said Queen Latifah. <laughs> Bloody hell. <laughs> And then it was like, you know, um, you know, like if there's a fugitive on the run and then they put a photo of them in the airport, so they had to send a fax of me in my uniform to the Truro TK Maxx to then go, oh, yeah, it's Queen Latifah, fucking <laughs> <laughs> keeper the mad bitch, Jesus. <laughs> but, but then there was a lot of downtime, and uh, when I wasn't in my lessons, everyone else was at their lessons, so I'd speak to my mum a lot, I'd write to her a lot, and then I, I got my first contract phone, and then I'd put the phone next to me on the bed and pretend, that's quite loser in it, pretend my mum was next to me and then I'd be chatting to her and uh, and then one time she just wasn't answering and then my dad just dropped it into conversation she goes oh yeah don't worry she's had a stroke what <laughs> and he goes he goes yeah she's had a stroke but don't worry about it don't come home and I said really she went she went to the addresses and then uh, and then they were cutting her hair that's what they do and then <laughs> they were having a spag bowl, what? And uh, <laughs> cut, cut in her hair, and then she's had a stroke, and then the hairdresser's gone, I think we need to call an ambulance, and my mum's gone, finish cutting my fucking hair first. <laughs> yeah, the severe bob. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so then, so I, but my dad was like, don't come home. And I was like, really? So then this woman, because then I worked in the Birmingham TK Maxx, so then this woman, Tracy, who used to work in the Cornwall, well, we had a bit of beef. What happened was, <laughs> when I was in Cornwall, I went to a barn dance rave and then I got my foot stuck in a 12-foot paper mache donkey. And then, <laughs> no palaver. And then this man dressed as Bob Marley, he, he rescued me from a fall on a bale of hay and then my, my leg was fucked. So then uh, I went to TK Maxx the next day to start my shift and then they see me on the CCTV cameras and were like, Harriet, to the office. So then I went to the office and they were like, what's happened to you? I said, well, I bloody, you'll never guess what. I went to a barn dance rave. I got my foot stuck in a 12 foot paper mache donkey. <laughs> and then I fell and then a man dressed as Bob Marley rescued me. And they're like, we need to go to the hospital. And that's on a Saturday. So very busy day in TK Maxx. So that's how bad it was. So then I went there to the hospital and then the doctor's like, I think we need to put it in a plaster cast. And I said, I can't be having it in a plaster cast. I'm going raving tonight. So I, <laughs> <laughs> so I escaped while Tracy was waiting for me in the car. So that's why there was beef. Like she was very upset with me because she was just in the car. But, but once she realised I was a lovable rogue things were all right so then I've told her because she's at the Birmingham one now so then I've told her about my mum and she's gone well why don't you ring up the hospital see what she sounds like and then if she doesn't sound very well then go home I said great idea Tracy so I rang the hospital spoke to my mum she sounded like a fucking blamange in a tumble dryer. She sounded fucking awful. So I, so I went home to make sure she was all right to be honest she was never really the same out of that after that did I say the same out of that it makes no sense. I worry about this. Have I made sense all the way? <laughs> because once I was on holiday with my friend and I was chatting to this man and then they both looked at each other and then my friend goes, oh, she does that. She says her words weird and you've got to sort of piece it together. I said, really? <laughs> so, I <laughs> so, I, so I worry that I'm just not... But yeah, she never was the same. But she was a proud Yorkshire woman so she wouldn't accept that there was a, that there was a problem. 
Bless her. And, and, and she wouldn't take any medication. She would do, if ever there was a problem, she'd be like, oh, I love my book. She had this book, Foods That Harm, Foods That Heal. What's that doing, Vivian? She'd be like, lost your ear. She'd be like, put a blueberry in it. <laughs> 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 yeah, and then so, so she wouldn't take any medication because she said, I'm not taking medication because once I uh, was watching a film and then I was eating, I had my tray there and I was just sick on my tray. And then another time I went shopping and then I needed a wee and then I, I, I uh, pulled my trousers down so I could get up the stairs quicker and go to the toilet. And then I forgot to take my shoes off and then my legs buckled, fell on the floor, shat myself. But I said, <laughs> <laughs> I said Mother, neither of those things are down to taking medication. <laughs> <laughs> and then a friend of mine in Cornwall stayed no one's ever laughed that much of that bit uh, <laughs> and then a friend of mine from Cornwall stayed over and then um, said that they woke up in the night to my mum just staring off into the distance next to the like had sat on the edge of the bed and then was just staring into the distance and my mum I was like that's weird mum and she, she was like oh well I'm uncomfortable in my own bed why don't you just sit on someone else's <laughs> <laughs> she said, well, I could have been staring at them. And I said, well, yes, that would have been more upsetting. But <laughs> yeah. And then we all do, isn't it? Even when, even when you're with the person that you love the most in the world, sometimes when you're fucking mental, you still can't see beyond your own spiders in your head. So, so there was a time where I wasn't speaking to my mum as much. And the last time I barely spoke to her... Well, she said she had indigestion. So I said, well, you need to stop eating your dinner on a tray in the living room. You need to eat it at the table. She's only had three heart attacks, and I'm, bless you. And I'm, telling, and I'm telling her to eat her dinner in the fucking, in the bloody living room. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so she's had all these heart attacks. Then my dad's like, I think we need to call an ambulance. And then my mum's like, can you please just pop to Holland and Barrow. <laughs> Get me some equinacea. <laughs> Eventually, got an ambulance and then took her to hospital and then she needed a scan. So, oh my God, is it called a scan? The big thing? Yeah. Oh, that's it. I was practising earlier. I had to have one of them because of my bloody ears and the fucking, you'll never guess what happened. The bloody, there was a power cut and I was trapped. <laughs> yeah, can you believe that? But everyone was doing the bloody, um, what's it called? Here, and I was in the machine. <laughs> yeah. They reckon head trauma, that's why my ears don't work. <laughs> it's a bit of an anticlimax when you've been stuck in a fucking scan machine for the half a day. Half. Um, <laughs> what was it? Yes. So go. To, so she's waiting for a scan. So then my dad. <laughs> that looks really funny in the mirror. <laughs> uh, so uh, so my dad and brother went to the uh, went back home to get her an overnight bag, and then a friend was. Oh, a friend. God bless her. Don't when you're filming, take the names out. I guess. Especially when I tell you this about. Uh, so <laughs> my mum's friend. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> My mum's friend, full stop, as um, she's got a son who's got a dick like a pig. And he's. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Isn't that mad? So I think when if you sleep with someone who's got a dick like a pig, do you then spin round? Because it's curly. So you're like. <laughs> just spinning around like a like a corkscrew. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So my mum's friend, she, oh bless them. So they both had strokes, so neither of their left hand sides worked properly. So I used to call them Yang and Yang. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean, that's probably the best joke in this, probably. Um, yeah. And once they come to TK Maxx and they were looking at handbags and then they went for a cup of tea and then they come back giggling because they didn't feel that they put all these handbags on their shoulders. They'd gone off with six handbags. <laughs> <laughs> Walked out with them. 
So, so my mum's friends um, said so they decided not to not to give her a scan because she was too weak. And then uh, her friends talking to my mum, and and her friend said that she, my mum just turned o- rolled over, and then that and then that was it. Yeah, she died. It was really sad. And we always should have, would have, could have, didn't we? We always think, oh, what was the last thing I said to her? And and, and you beat yourself up that you couldn't be there. Let me tell you where I was. I needed to go to Cornwall quickly. I lived in Manchester, and for some reason I wasn't thinking straight. I couldn't afford to get the train, so I, I asked a friend to give me a lift. Why did I choose this friend? The sort of friend, you know, when you speak to someone, and every single time it's only a matter of time before you say these words to them. Sorry, you're importing what now? <laughs> you know, that sort of friend. So he's, he's like, yeah, I'll give you a lift to Cornwall. And, uh, and then on the way that he's like, I've just got to do this one thing. Did you know how much money there is in bull semen? <laughs> Hell of a lot. So when, when my mum was, di- was dead, that had died, I was on my way to a pub in Walsall with a, big, a bin bag of bull semen <laughs> wibbling around on the seat behind. <laughs> And it was, <laughs> just let that compute. And this was on, it happened October the 26th. So it was on the one day that there was an extra hour to the day. So it was the worst day of my life with an extra hour. And you do, don't you? When, you, when you've lost someone before they should have gone, you then find it very difficult to be, you know, when there's like cantankerous old cunts going about their business and you're like, ugh. Why is this bastard still alive? And my poor, lovely mother isn't. But you can't live your life like that because you just send yourself mad, angry that people are still alive. (laughs) (laughs) And it also made me realise, it made me think, I wish I'd had those little banana defibrillators. (laughs) (laughs) Well, that's the best that bit's gone, even though... (laughs) Even though I... What a beautiful little oh, oh. and you you start oh my partner's mum's a bloody nightmare. She so she's just so angry and my mum was just just so like lovely and calm and placid. Whereas my partner's mum, she's seventy five, and uh, she was telling me how what happened was a friend come round and a friend's son ate a whole jar of her beetroot, and then <laughs> <laughs> and then she, and then she goes that little fucking bastard needs to fucking watch himself or I'll fucking body slam him. <laughs> 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 at 75 bloody Geraldine Haystacks and and all of her all of her kids have got these massive big oval beautiful eyes and I think that's where she's had them all in a chokehold as <laughs> as children yeah. but we're all just a product of our upbringing aren't we really so so she's just, you know, she hasn't had a very li- nice life, really. And she, this is completely true as well. She was telling me, I once went out with this pimp. That's what she's saying. <laughs> she went out with this pimp, and then he had a cane, and you unscrewed the top, and there was a dagger. <laughs> yeah, like bloody Mask of Zorro. But instead of Z for Zorro, it would be T for trafficker. Because <laughs> pimps are really romanticised. <laughs> <laughs> she always gets her words muddled up uh, so she, she's always going on about um, Tim Book One <laughs> yeah, yeah. Tim Book One I said do you mean Tim Book Two <laughs> not <laughs> my partner's mum <laughs> and uh, <laughs> I, I, and she goes no Tim Next Door Book One <laughs> he's fucking cat got this cat, no-face cat. So everyone says it's a no-face cat, and I thought, what is everyone on about this no-face cat? But I always see the cat with its back to me, and then one day, turn around, it's got no face. <laughs> I was thinking about it, and I was like, oh, that makes sense. Because apparently it got clipped by a Fiat Punto, right? And I, like I said, I was like, that makes sense, because I've seen a Fiat Punto going around with the face of a cat, you see. But I never, 
I never thought anything to it, you see. I just assumed it was the natural progression from, you know, when people have cars with eyelashes? <laughs> I thought it goes, cars with eyelashes. <laughs> Cats. Cat faces. My partner, he also gets his words muddled up. He was, uh, so, my partner's got four kids. We've got all the four kids. <laughs> I think, oh, quickly, but don't you think it's extraordinary that I'm considered the safest option, that we've got all the kids <laughs> mental? But anyway, so they were taken from the kid's mum, so he's, so he's, my partner's obviously still in touch with her because of, of the kids, so they were voice noting uh, the other week and I was listening as best I can. And um, basically, he said to her, don't get high rate with me. And then she's gone to him, I'm not getting high rate with you, you're getting high rate with me. And I said, do you both think it's high rate? <laughs> <laughs> and because they were childhood sweethearts, they learned the word together, <laughs> thought it was high rate, which I just thought was very funny. So I was taking the piss and then they were both a bit embarrassed and I said, I'm ever so sorry. I didn't mean to insult your intelligence. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. So the kids, oh dearie. So the, oh bless her. So the kid's mum, she's just a devote. She's just. And then she was going out with this guy who we were excited about because he didn't have any testicles. So I, th I thought, I thought. <laughs> I don't know why, but I just imagined that he had a sheet of lasagna there <laughs> instead. Um, yeah. So he didn't have any testicles and he didn't drink, which is one of our big problems. So we were really excited. But then, so then what happened was he, um, it was, he was off his head and then he, ch he chased the children with a crowbar. Yeah. And then I said to her, you know, you need to start thinking about these men that you're getting with and putting, choosing better men to, for the kids and, and, you know, preferably, call me old fashioned, but not men that are going to chase your children with crowbars. <laughs> and, and she said, this is what she says. Mm, it wasn't a crowbar, it was a wrench. So this is what <laughs> this is what we're dealing with. So then we had this, we all had this, uh, let me bloody put my head through my new, new pasta machine in anguish. And then I, if I put my head through a pasta machine, I'd imagine, you know Dr. Zoyberg with yeah. the things? I'd imagine that instead of them, I'd have Tagatelli. <laughs> but anyway, um, so then we had to have this meeting where she was going to have contact again and all this business. And, um, uh, and then it seemed to go well. We all got on with each other. And then the next day, she so they had a meet, uh, they had contact. And then she, <coughs> at that meeting, she asked me and my partner if we wanted a threesome with her. <laughs> yeah, I've, got, I've got no joke about that bit. It's just, I'm just absolutely shocked. It's just speechless. Nothing about this situation is making me feel horny. And then, <laughs> yeah, and then the next day, she was pulled up on it and she was like, mm, I was on coke and came then. And then that sort of, that sort of, now the kids are like that because with the oldest kids, well, they're like 19, 21 now, but the oldest kids, she, we got a job in, got her a job in a pizza place by us and then she dropped the pizza on the floor, put it back in the box and give it to the customer and then the customer's like, I've just seen you drop the pizza on the floor and then you've put it in a box and given it to me and the oldest girl goes, mm, it wasn't cheese side down. So this is what we're, this is what we're dealing with. And then the other daughter, she come out as a bisexual asthmatic. And then <laughs> she did, and then, and then the next day, cause I had to like, I had to like catfish to get them jobs because, the, because I asked them to do it themselves. I asked them to copy and paste the CV I'd done for them into the uh, Indeed thing. And then the oldest, she just copied, she took, she copied her telephone number and pasted it as her name. <laughs> so this is what we're dealing with. So then when she come out, I know, when she come out, <laughs> it was 7-7, seven, seven. when she come out as a bisexual asthmatic, the next day I said, oh, I've got you a job at Turtle Bay, colours drained from her face, because she didn't know Turtle Bay was a, a restaurant, she thought I was sending her to an island. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, I'm not even joking, it's just a, just a Caribbean restaurant in Manchester. <laughs> So yeah, it's not really a happy ending to this, really. But there's a, 
the boys, so the girls, oh, well, I'll tell you this. So the, the oldest is so the oldest girl found us very boring because we are quite boring. We live in the countryside, you know, don't, well, don't do drugs. Is that boring? Um, I've done enough over the years, let me tell you. So then, um, uh, so, so she went back to live with her mother and then her mother got a new boyfriend that looked like Patrick Swayze, but did he? And then, um, <laughs> and then he had a friend who was a handyman and also a crackhead. So then, and then, and then the mother was accusing her daughter of getting with the crackhead, and then, but they weren't. So kicked him out, and then they got together. So the daughter rang us and said, "Can can I come back home? Of course you can. Can I bring the crackhead? Probably not." Uh, and now she's with the crackhead's brother. And I said, "This is not foundations for a relationship here." And uh, she said, oh, well, I've got a type. Yeah, but a type is like tall, dark, and handsome. Not related. <laughs> like, her, her idea of online dating is Ancestry.com. So just, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you can, I say to them, I can only bring a horse to water. But then they're always like, well, you always want about these wet horses, are you? <laughs> <laughs> so we got the boys, the boys full time. God bless them, they're absolutely adorable. Bless them. And, uh, uh, but they'd never been to the seaside, never been to the seaside. So I took them to the seaside and all that, took them crabbing. And uh, then they had a big fat argument. And the bloody, turn my back for a second, the crab lines, they look like Mr. Messy. This is just <laughs> chaos. And then I've had an argument, one of them slipped on a bit of bacon, and I said, careful, or you'll split your difference. <laughs> <laughs> what I love is I don't know if it's a British thing or a universal thing that people always think that they can't be seen <laughs> um, oh my god I'm here <laughs> yeah bless them bless them the kids and then so the oldest um I have no idea. The oldest uh, boy, because I have a birthday every year, and then uh, I didn't, I didn't mention it this year. And then the oldest boy gave me a, a folded up bit of paper, and it, well, it said to him from him. He got a bit confused, but it said, um, "Thank you for all you do. We really do a pretty carte it." Which I, oh yeah, I thought that was really nice. And then in July we went to, um, we went to Blackpool, and then on the way back, the, the oldest boy is gone. These were the best days of my life. Oh. And that's how low the bar is. <laughs> Blackpool! <laughs> oh, bless and I realise it's, you know, it's none of their faults. They just, like, I've just been lucky that I had a great mother, really, because they, they have no point of reference. That's why it's all just fucking chaos, because they didn't have a good mother. Um, whether, so, whether you've believe in people looking down on you or whatever I guess I you know my mum well, well she sort of lives on <laughs> through me do you know what I mean like because I think well what would my mother do um and yeah that's the show really final moth <laughs> it's, uh... <laughs> that is a moth Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a moth disguising it. This is true. They disguise themselves as turds. Yeah. So when my mum was judgmental all those years ago, thinking I was bringing her turds. Well, Vivian, they're actually moths being turds. Thank you. And that's the show. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I really appreciate you uh, coming, uh, coming, uh, coming along. It's very, very kind of you to spend your Saturday with me. These were recommended for me on Amazon. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're nailing life. If you're on the computer, Amazon's like, I think you might like these. You're fucking right. I bloody would. <laughs> Woo. I'm almost 40. Um, <laughs> And so thanks so much for coming. <laughs>